Hello. Today I'm going to talk about the lunar eclipse. That, and you can see my bandage. I'm just going to cover that up so that it's not so obvious. I still have to wear my, I have to go back to wearing it because my arm is not healing as fast as I'd like, but you know, that's life. So um, basically today I want to talk about the lunar eclipse. Um, as I learn astrology and as it all unfolds and um, different things, um, I'm personally affected deeply by eclipses because my son, my husband has a, a sun moon opposition and actually was born on an eclipse. So for him, um, you know, the full moon and the, the sun moon opposition uh, ha plays a significant part in his day to day life and his ability to integrate. And I suspect uh, that there are many of us. Uh, anytime you have an opposition in your chart, there is going to be um, there's going to be a little, little bit more energy. But when you have a, 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 a when you're born on an eclipse, and it, and I'm and I'm not trying to refer to my husband as any in any way as Trump, uh, because you know, but but Trump was also born uh, during a uh, an eclipse, and um, he also has in his natal chart the Sun Moon opposition. And this, uh, this eclipse, this uh, lunar eclipse now that's getting ready to happen, and, I've, and this is the, the chart for it, of course. I've already done a penumbral eclipse, and this time I'm going to talk about it as the lunar eclipse. Um, because um, this is a, a lunar eclipse um, that's happening in um, Gemini. And uh, basically um, where we're at is that... Um, our information is changing as we speak, and it's also a, it's also um, energy of of moving forward, moving on, moving to something new, and um, and then we have a configuration that only takes place uh, once every eight hundred years in this in this process. So. Um, with that, I am going to uh, go ahead and put my laptop down. I am going to draw uh, 12 cards, um, and if so inspired, I will draw a, um, a uh, 13th card. Um, you know, I don't know. Sometimes Spirit just inspires me to draw an additional card to kind of sum it all up, and sometimes I don't have that inspiration, so we'll see where we go here. Okay, so what we're asking about this to me, the, the statement that keeps coming up in my mind is pack your bags, you're moving. And of course, you know, I know that with my husband in a full moon, it's a time of examining, uh, uh, looking at areas that are tender and important to him um, and recalibrating. So, and eclipses are, are, again, in an order of magnitude, going to bring that up even more so. So, you know, people who are born with this eclipse full moon uh, energy, you know, it does, it is a special slice of the uh, astrological pie. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and take the cards and I will, again, like I said, I'll be drawing 12 and perhaps one extra. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I, I kind of like that the energy is pack your bags, you're moving. It, because Not because, you know, maybe it's literal that you're moving, but you're moving on from whatever baggage you that has been keeping you, um, keeping you held down. And I think that that's the energy that this, that this lunar eclipse is, is bringing forward. Uh, you know, pack your bags, you're moving, you're moving on. You're moving on from these concepts, these ideas, these things that are holding you down. And I think that's what's going to ha happen for all signs. And we get the Empress, pregnant with possibilities. And it's funny, I did a reading yesterday for my husband, and we got this very card. Um, and then he had, a, right after that, the sun. And so this is kind of almost that sun-moon opposition that I'm talking about, this eclipse energy. If you note that the sunflower is in front of this disc-shaped 
item and it it's as if is it's as if it's saying this this life is coming forward it is getting ready yes it is sort of like we're going to open up into something new something is changing okay that's the foundation of the reading and so let's go ahead and start it out let's make sure i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve Okay, there's our 12 cards. Our foundation is the Empress, the possibilities, the possibilities of something new. And this is the Lunar Eclipse. And that, um, let's see what we get in Aries. Um, is um, In Aries, we, it's how we see ourselves. Aries is in Virgo. Okay, and we get the Achiever, the Man of Worlds. Yes, um, you know, I think that, that it is kind of at this time almost like a victory lap that, that we're doing. We've had this four years, this election, um, a conclusion that's not exactly easy for us to, to ferret out because there's so much going on. But our very need for survival in this election just took place, and we basically needed to come out and say, uh, no, thank you, we don't need four more years of this. We need this to come to a halt. And therefore, you know, victory for those, uh, you know, the achievers, victory for the world, the man of the worlds, okay? And then in our second house of of financial security we get the guardian the woman of crystals that energy of of what is going to come forward is is that we are in retreat um we are having to look to the energy that will bring us back some balance and what we have in this is we have venus in libra we want to see ourselves as balanced and fair and equitable. And perhaps we need to look at that. Perhaps, um, perhaps the guardian is saying, go back and look at that a little bit more carefully. And, and I find that interesting because I do think that, that how we've behaved this last four years tells me something about the people on this planet and how Mars-oriented we are, how Martian-oriented we are. And I honestly wonder if we're from Mars. I mean, lately it has been occurring to me that our aggressiveness, our, our lack of willingness to get along is a kind of energy that's Martian, okay? And I'm wondering if we are Martian, okay? In our house of information, and we get um, Mercury and Scorpio, which is means that you know that the way the information has been going is it's been painful. It's been, it's been complex. It's um it's been sharp and to the point. Um, it, you know, Mercury is going to be that that complex scientific alchemical process, and in Scorpio, you know, with the stinger, it's going to kind of hurt. And our sun is in Scorpio. How we see ourselves right now is in some review. It's in some deep review. And we get the strength card. Um, that, that, that information is going to come out in, in some form of, a, of strength in this pack your bags, you're moving moment. So I do think that that means that we are going to learn a good deal about what went on in this last four years and this eclipse is just the beginning. And due to the fact that, that Trump is, uh, you know, eclipse impacted, um, I can only imagine the, uh, the drama that is taking place at this time. Uh, he is really, truly struggling in his ability and with this eclipse to make sense out of the sting that just took place for him, okay? I mean, not that I'm really going to get into too much of his energy because, well... Uh, and then take note of the fact that this is an 11, you know, that civic energy, that mm, interesting. In the third house, the civic energy itself is going to change. How we view politics is going to change. And then in our house of mother, how we feel about ourselves and how if we feel loved, heard, listened to. Um, uh, in our house of mother, we get the five of worlds. It's going to feel like a setback to a lot of people. And I know that's true. There are people that come around me and ask me if I 
know about QAnon and, and whether or not I participate in that particular energy, and I do not. Um, I, I have stated before that, you know, I think it's easy to get involved in conspiracy theory of certainly something's wrong and we do need to fill in the blanks because, well, we're not told the truth, but I don't think we need an organization for that. I, I, I'll call 1-800-SPIRIT for that particular area, okay? So then we get in the fifth house of brother, sister, you know, our children, pets, and we have some limitations in this particular area. And right now we do have some limitations. We have COVID, we have, and we have um, a conjunction. We have Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn conjunction. Um, that's that every 800-year kind of energy. This is, a, this is uh, in, in Venus, you know, how we see ourselves, how we see our families, how we see our responsibilities. Everything about it is changing our sense of who we are is changing. And again, it's that pack your bags, you're moving. We get the magician. You know that, yeah, there, there are things that are happening right now in this eclipse, this lunar eclipse, where there are people that don't want to have to follow the, the bottom line and, and do, but that conjunction, it's every 800 years. I'm afraid it's past anybody's personal will point. It is not going to be something that they get to decide. And the magician is 100% manifestation. We're about to manifest the divine in the fifth house, in the house of children, pets, okay? And in the sixth house of career, um, we're in Aquarius, okay? And how we, we, we go forward with with things is uh, basically in a hermit form. It is in, and if you take a look at the number up above, it is, uh, uh, this is a number nine card, the humanitarian card. Um, in our career area, we are being shifted via some humanitarian energy given this particular lunar eclipse, okay? And in our house of partnerships, we have the Two of Cups. To regain our equilibrium, this process that we are in, this collective process, this earth-changing, life-changing process, is to bring our attention back to our partnerships, to our very survival. We need our partnerships to survive. We need to enhance our partnerships to survive. So we have a two of cups. Our relationships are an emphasis at this time. And our relationships are in Pisces. So it's a universal energy. Okay. And then we get uh, in the eighth house of death, taxes, rebirth, and transformation. We have, uh, we have Mars in, um, in, Pisces, which yes, we have a lot of people dying, um, and and it is some really hefty and uncomfortable energy, and we have Uranus in Aries, kind of that that unexpected, uh, sudden and unexpected surprise. Well, in being in Aries, it's it, you know it kind of Mars kind of drowns it out, so it really doesn't provide us just a whole lot of information, except for that in the house of death, we're going to see, you know, a good number of people in which we kind of all know that. So that's consistent with what's happening. So we get the man of crystals in the eighth house, the house of death, birth, and rebirth and taxes. We get the inventor. Well, you know, I know that I'm the man of crystals. I'm all about, you know, the study of the veil um, because I have a second house Saturn where my limitations were in my were were um, my self esteem, my income, my parents, my father. I mean, it just goes on and on. And my goal was to to stretch out uh, beyond the veil and see that there was more, is more that I am that I'm held up by a lot more than just what is physical. And in that sense, for me, it was a lifelong lesson in this. And in this particular eclipse, I must admit that, that I find myself, just as I provide you this information, I'm also providing myself this information and in doing my work. Okay, and in the ninth house of, of higher education, we get the moon in Taurus, you know, kind of that 
buckling down and, and, and learning to listen about house and home and what it's going to take to make things work for the masses in our society. We get death. We get rapid transformation. Now, death doesn't mean death in the literal sense. It does mean that, that something in this regard is about to change. And I have been sensing, and I like this for this particular lunar eclipse, I do feel like we are going to we are going to relook at how we um, provide coin to the end of the uh, in a person's paycheck so that they can pay their rent. I think that that is something that's coming forward, and I think a symptom of it was when we saw unemployment needing to be a bigger amount because the amount a person earns in her paycheck on a weekly basis isn't enough to cover their cost of living, and they knew by asking people to go home and remain safe that what they were doing by giving them the money they needed to survive is they were, in fact, providing them a way forward. So it does tell me very much the government is aware that the way they do money um, in, in, the, in the house of, of higher education, the way that is all being played out at this time is something that, in fact, has to be looked at. Now, now it's scary because a lot of people feel that this is going to lead to socialism. Um, I think it might be, the word I might want to use is called fair. It's going to become more equal and fair, okay? And in the house of government, we have the North Node in Taurus. What this time is truly about in government is the Ten of Worlds. Um, it's reward for them. Um, they're functioning almost as a, a corporation, a business, um, and, and it's 29 degrees, the North Node, and which means that it has some emphasis in being at higher end. So this time was fated to be exactly what it is today. So, you know, and it's in Gemini, uh, the North Node, or excuse me, in Taurus, and the outer house is uh, Gemini. So uh, it, there's going to be some information in that sense coming forward about the government um, and the purpose of government in our lives and how it, how, and this lunar eclipse is here to show us, maybe not so much, folks, maybe this government process you're in needs a relook. And I think it does. I think that might be true. Um, in, in the 11th house of mystic, we get the four of wands. We're aspiring to, to come out of this better, more whole, more clear, more more put together. Um, and that is in cancer, where cancer is how we feel. It's kind of a black hole of feelings. Things go in, you process, you hang on to, you commiserate, you think about. That is going to be that cancerian energy, and that's in the 11th house of the mystic. And then you get the 12th house. Uh, it, it's in Leo, the unseen, the collective love. Uh, in Leo, the I am in the twelfth house. You have the five of cups, the number of the, the divine. Um, you know that for for many of us, it is going to be disappointment, um, it, and that's interesting because half of us are going to get uh, a president we voted for, and the other half are going to get a president they didn't vote for and they don't want, and and so. This speaks to a divided people. But the number five is a number of the divine. And it's almost as if we've come to this place of disappointment and need to discuss some new possibilities. The Empress, pregnant with possibilities, so that we can change our relationships with each other. This Lunar eclipse is here to remind us of what really matters at the end of the day. And with that, please do hit the like, share, and subscribe button. And do please join me on www.twiggytwiggie.com. And if you find you have some funny questions and you just don't know the answers and you'd like to understand yourself better, Join me over on Twiggy and book a reading, a natal chart reading. Um, there, that is different than a natal report. And I strongly recommend that you start with the reporting so that you can familiarize yourself with who you are 
and then contact me for an actual natal chart reading. And with that, I thank you. Please do join myself and Pearl Rowland over on www.twiggytwiggie.com and hit the like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me here today.